John answered them all and said, I am symbolically baptizing you with water, but one who is more powerful than me is coming, one whose sandal thong I am not sufficient to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, ready to cleanse his threshing floor and gather the grain into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Luke 3, 16 and 17 The fire itself, besides being literal, is also a symbol of the judgment under which all human beings find themselves for their sinful conduct, John 3, 18, and no one has ever been completely without sin, save Jesus Christ, compare Romans 3, 9. We are given to see this intimate connection between divine judgment and the fire which fills the lake of damnation in both Isaiah's and Daniel's accounts of Antichrist's final end. Topheth, that is, the lake of fire, has long been prepared. It has been made ready for the king, that is, Antichrist. Its fire pit has been made deep and wide, with an abundance of fire and wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of burning sulphur, sets it ablaze. Isaiah 30, 32 and 33 I kept looking until thrones were set down, and the Ancient of Days, that is, the Father, took his seat. His attire was white as snow, as was the hair of his head, white like the purest wool. His throne was aflame with fire, and its wheels were a blazing fire. A river of fire was flowing, and it poured forth from before him. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads were standing before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Meanwhile I kept looking on account of the sound of the arrogant words which the horn, that is, Antichrist, was speaking. I kept looking until he was killed, and his body destroyed and given over to the burning fire. Daniel 7, 9 through 11 The lake is thus filled up by a fiery river of divine wrath and judgment, a river of fire which flows forth from the throne of God, with this portion of the scene in Daniel 7, referring through prophetic conflation to the Father's judgment of Satan and his angels in eternity past. In Revelation chapter 14, we find this now fully prepared lake of fire, positioned before Christ's great white throne, at the time of the last judgment of human beings, which at the point of our present context in this study is about to commence immediately. And yet a third angel followed them, saying in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark upon his forehead or upon his hand, he himself will also drink from the wine of God's wrath, which has been mixed undiluted in the cup of his anger. And that person will be tormented in fire and sulphur before angels, and saints and before the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment will go up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, those who worship the beast and his image, and whoever takes the mark of his name. Revelation 14, 9 through 11. This passage portrays the act of execution as part of the process of the final judgment of unbelievers. That is the meaning and the force of the phrase in verse 10, before the Lamb. Just as the lake was initially filled directly from the Father's throne during the prehistoric judgment of the devil and his followers, so the final judgment for the human race will likewise take place directly in front of the lake of fire. Upon the passing of sentence, those whose names are found to have been blotted out of the book of life for the cause of unbelief will be summarily cast in before or in the presence of the Lamb and all of us his followers who will attend the proceedings. We therefore should not take the passage quoted to mean that the place of the lake of fire will be the new Jerusalem, where the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ will reside with us forever, for we know from elsewhere in Scripture that hell will instead be far removed from their glorious presence, since indeed it is just for God to repay with tribulation those who are subjecting you to tribulation, and to give you who are being distressed relief along with us at the revelation of our Lord Jesus from heaven with his powerful angels, wreaking vengeance in a flame of fire upon those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and the glory of His power. 2 Thessalonians 1, 6 through 9 Through the grace and mercy of God the Father, the horrible fate of those consigned to the lake of fire will not trouble us for a moment in the blissful eternity we shall spend with Him and our dear Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, Isaiah 25, 8 and Revelation 7, 17. 
That is so even though there are scriptural indications that the lake of fire and its inhabitants will indeed be visible to us in eternity. For just as the new heavens and new earth which I am about to make are going to continue before me, says the Lord, so your seed and its name will continue. And it will come to pass that from month to month and from Sabbath to Sabbath all flesh will come to worship before me, says the Lord. And they will go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who rebelled against me, for their worm will not die, and their fire will not be quenched, and they will be abhorrent to all flesh. Isaiah 66, 22 through 24 Since it already exists, since it will be visible in the future, standing as an eternal memorial to the folly of rejecting God and His mercy, Revelation 14, 10, and since it will be no part of the new Jerusalem or the new heavens and new earth, the lake is in all probability located within the subterranean realm of the present earth. This location has much to recommend it. Firstly, the prehistoric filling of the lake in Daniel chapter 7 and the adjudication of Satan's case which accompanied it, John 16, 11, must have taken place after the devastation and inundation of the original heavens and earth within the Genesis gap, that is, following Satan's rebellion which occurred between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2. After this supernatural darkening of the original universe, apart from the third heaven, technically a separate place from the twin heavens and the earth, and as a paradise in its own right, inappropriate for the location of the lake of fire, only the subterranean earth would have remained unaffected by the judgment upon initial creation stemming from the devil's revolt. For this reason, it would seem to have been the only place available for those proceedings, as well as the only place available for the positioning of the lake of fire, whose filling is described at Daniel 7.10. According to this interpretation, the third heaven was made and has always remained perfect. The twin heavens and earth are the place where creature-free will produces imperfection in what was originally created perfect, thus necessitating the choice between mercy and judgment, and the subterranean earth was made as the place for containing and restraining those who choose the latter over the former. It is more than a little interesting to note that while the devil and his angels were not deposited into the lake of fire, at the time, sentence was passed upon them, it being God's good pleasure to demonstrate the justice of his decision and the mercy which could have been theirs through the process of creating and redeeming mankind. Yet he gave them to see the horror of their final end well ahead of time, and yet they made no effort to repent, trusting instead in Satan's ability to defeat the Lord in the contest ahead, human history. The last judgment will likewise take place in a very similar interlude, after the destruction of the present heavens and earth, Revelation 20.11, but before the creation of the new heavens and new earth, Revelation 21.1. In this instance too, only the third heaven, inappropriate for the presence of evil or the final place of condemnation, and the subterranean earth will, temporarily, remain. It is within the latter, directly in front of the lake of fire, that the final judgment will take place. Finally, after the creation of the new heavens and new earth and descent from the third heaven to earth of the new Jerusalem, Revelation 21.2 and 21.10, Isaiah chapter 66 indicates that there will be some sort of visual access to the lake of fire from the new earth, along the lines of the heavenly sea in the third heaven today, which acts as a viewing port for observing events on the present day, earth. But just as there is a great fixed chasm between the subterranean paradise and the interim hell of torments, which prevents any access from one place to the other, Luke 16, 26, and just as there was little interest on the part of the departed believers in the just fate of those who rejected God in this life, Luke 16, 25. So the lake of fire and final end of all those who arrogantly and deliberately chose to oppose our Lord will be of little moment to those of us who are enjoying the ineffable blessings of eternity in the presence of our dear Saviour Jesus Christ.